Hi guys, guess it is who again? Bishop Elect Lewin. Yes, and we are here at the gas station and both jacks are getting some gas. But I have an interesting topic that I want to talk about today. So that's um Lady Lewin. Malikai, Daniel. Dan Dan, say hi. Hi. <laughs> right, so the, the, the topic that I want to talk about today is when church has become a business. Bye bye. Alright. Right, so the topic I want to talk about today is when the house of the Lord has become a business. Because I was streaming across um, Facebook, YouTube, I think it's Facebook. Um, social media platform and while I was streaming across social media platform I realized that there was this bishop a well known bishop I won't call any name but I will condemn the act the well known bishop was asking for five thousand dollars I think it was a tent revival yes a tent revival and he was asking for 5,000 Jamaican dollars. Now, this young man have $500. Perhaps it was the only $500 he have to go and buy his dinner or to buy his meal. But he see it as a way of making a sacrifice, giving into the house of God. Right? And the young man carry up the five hundred dollar and he place it in the um the offering pan. And when the young man placed that five hundred dollar in the offering bucket, the pastor or the bishop is so rude and out of order and so ill mannered. Yes, yet I use a word to allow them to know that I can call word of their um, caliber also. That is an ill-mannered behavior for you to take out the $500 and to give it back to the young man and tell him to go take it by party and juice. This can't buy party and juice. What I am saying is you'd rather for that young man to go and thief to go and commit an act that is not according to the will of God and then carry the money and place it in the, the house of the Lord, which would become a sacrament. And for those that don't know the meaning of sacrament, would become unholy. Because it would be a money which he receive in a irrigable manner. That is not pleasing according to the will of God. Yes, according to Bible, according to scripture, the scripture allows us to know that one tenth of our earning belongs to the house of God. So that means if you work a hundred dollars, ten dollars is for your tithing. A thousand, a hundred is for your tithing. If you work a hundred thousand, ten um ten thousand out of it. If it's a million, you will throw a hundred thousand for your tithing. So one ten percent according to Bible, according to scripture belongs to the house of God but you do not have the right to determine the amount that the individual give because I have to speak about it because um, I realize it's becoming dominant in the house of God so that means uh, if you don't have uh, 10,000 or 20,000 then nobody now pray for you because then start create money line and you have to join up with your money right before you get prior now according to scripture the scripture has allow us to know that the gospel is not for sale freely you receive freely you give may never see jesus christ of nazareth i read in the scripture where he was walking around and for him to um allow the crippled man walk the, the, this mother or the father or the family would have to put the money together and pay him and then he make them walk or the blind man to see or the deaf to hear or the dumb to talk you name it 
it was for free. So I want to know. I am I am the old type of generation pastor, you know. I don't believe in these new age pastor. I'm the old type, old time religion pastor. Right? No. The gospel is for free. And there should not be a charge to the gospel. But what I realize is that some of these so-called ministers which the Bible have warned us about that in the last days a lot of false prophets shall arise in the land and deceive many, right? No, back in Jesus' days, Jesus, the Son of God, was a carpenter. Just to name a few, Luke was a doctor, right? Okay? Peter was a fisherman. No, bishop, apostle, pastor, minister. What is your occupation? You take the house of God and allow it to become a business. No, that's why Jesus have to beat them out of his house. You know, the scripture I'm talking on a scripture based point this morning. Nobody will want to say it, but I have to be the one that stand up in the land of the living and allow them to know that what you're doing is wrong you're a thief you're a scammer and you need to stop it in the house of god now the bible allow us to know right that those who preach the gospel should live by the gospel yes as you, you will draw scripture on me, but I know the word of God. And according to scriptures, those who preach the word should live by the word. But there should not be a charge, sir. There should not be a charge, ma'am. You have become entertainers in God's house. Where you are putting up your, your big figures for people to match up to. When it is for free, it is for free. My God Almighty. So the scripture, according to scripture, the Bible allows us to know that Jesus went into the temple. And after he went into the temple, he take his he beat them out in Jamaican terms. Um to, to um substitute so you can understand. And take his leather belt and he start flag them and run them out of the house. He turn over the tables, he leg the pigeons. Because they were using it as a monetarily gain. Them thing they make God vex, man. God vex. They were using it as a monetarily gain. Right? They were doing it for the money. He turned over the table. He let go the pigeon. And he run them out of the house. And he allowed them to know that my house shall be called a house of prayer but you have turned it into a dens of thief because i realize we are living in a society now where everybody want to get rich nobody remember the scripture where, 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 where remind us that it is hard for a rich man to inherit the kingdom of God. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. And it is very hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of the living God. God, the rich man, have to thief the poor man and suppress and oppress and kick down the poor man. You have a piece of land and he want, he say, you squatters and he come push you off and put up plaque sign and get architects and put up big building. Right? And get rid of you as a small man which is not right in the land of the living. So we have to change. We have to detour. The church needs to detour and go back to the right path. Right, so apostles, bishops, pastors, and ministers, you need to do the right. Because you don't want when judgment day appears and you're standing before the throne of God, you hear, depart from me, I know you not. You want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. So repent 
clean up yourself. If a god, a god. If a mammal, a mammal. A mammal is a demon. You cannot serve God and mammal. Jesus allowed them to know. Right? You're going to love one and you're going to hate one. And the word of God also allows us to know that if the, the love of the world is in you, then the love of God my Father is not in you. You can't love the world and love God. So you have to make up your mind. If a God, as I said before, a God, and if I world, I world. If a God, a God, and if I devil, I devil. I'm out.